welcome to Deming Chronicles, where we deconstruct many of today's issues in terms of governance and the constitution, business and development, and the impact of the civic sector on our development. Our objective is to change the narrative about all the issues in today's world, how they impact Trinidad and Tobago. We bring you thoughtful conversations with idea generators and opinion leaders. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. I'm Denise Deming, and our guest at this section of the programming is Nirad Tawari, Chief Executive Officer of the American Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Welcome, Nirad. Thank you, Denise. Thanks for having me, and good day to all of your viewers. Tell me, you seem to have had a focus on governance. Why are you so obsessed with governance? What's that about? Well, I, th I think we all are, um, or all should be, because governance is the only way to provide equity in any situation. So as, as human beings, we are not naturally inclined to rules, um, you know, like, like any other animal. Um, and we give up some of our freedoms or our, our freedom to do what we like to become part of a society, uh, whatever that society is. And in that society, there's a contract, an implicit and explicit contract. The primary reason of, for participating in the society is protection. So in the medieval societies, you know, you'd have the walls of the city to protect you from other cities, other warlords or other kings and kingdoms who wanted to attack. And the primary purpose of that was to provide protection for the society and pull up the drawbridge and make sure they can't cross the moat and what have you. And hunter-gatherers, the same thing way back when. They organized in society and started to farm and so on. And, and there was a division of labor. And the, the, the group or the tribe or the nation or whatever it is would try to protect its members. And in that, you need to ensure that those who have the power to do the protecting also do not take advantage of those who need the protection, right? And that if there are resources that are communally derived or accessed, that they, are, that they serve the welfare of the group. Now, that doesn't mean that the individual will always prosper. There are times where the individual's interests may have to be subsumed uh, in favor of the protection of the group, such as when there, were lepr there was leprosy, right? You'd have to take those people because there was no cure at the time, and you'd have to isolate them and hope, you know, give them the best mm -hmm. care and so on because the, the welfare of the group. And governance is a hard thing because those who are in, in the positions of power and authority need to make tough decisions every day, tough decisions about resources, tough decisions about security, tough decisions about who gets what when there's a little extra, who gets what when there isn't extra. And, and those are very, very difficult things. And so to me, governance starts with a vision, a vision that is articulated by the leadership and that engages the population in the case of a nation state so that there is general buy-in. You will not get 100%, but there's general understanding that this is where we want to go and this is why we want to go there. And along the way, there will be sacrifices, there will be choices to be made. And But this is why. This is what we are working toward. So when you are asked to sacrifice or when you are asked to contribute um, or when you see something happening, you understand what the big picture is. Now, saying something is easy making it happen is where it becomes difficult or the rubber hits the road as the saying goes so you need institutions of various kinds to allow that to happen or to make that happen but the institutions must have processes 
that allow the institutions to work, understanding that those institutions work in an ecosystem. And so how decisions are made, how outcomes are achieved, things like speed, things like cost for those things, things like what about where you have people who fall outside of the norm for any reason, how do they fit into the framework of the overall goal and how do the institutions interact with them? And an institution could be, say, the education system. Not all children are alike, but the majority of them would fall into a, a general bucket, right? But how do we treat with those who are not and how do we ensure outcomes for them that we say we want in a way that also doesn't affect or take away from the, the majority? So it's, it's both, right? You have to protect the majority, but you also have to protect the minority. And then you need the people to execute, to make all of this happen. And so you also need sanction for when there is behavior or activity that undermines or is outside of what is the accepted norm. And if you do that and you create a system starting with what do we want to achieve and how do we employ, say, design thinking or how, how do we design the process for the outcome that we want, right? And then create the institutions to do that and find the right people to help execute along the way. So having identified that tremendous framework of what governance is, what are some of the things we ought to be doing in the ecosystem, how do you assess Trinidad and our performance in terms of governance? Well, I mean, it's it's no secret that we are work in progress, right? We, 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 we need to do a lot better in terms of governance. Um, and and it's, it's all spheres. You see, we talk about governance and we, we automatically jump to government. But if you look at the sporting sector, almost all of the sporting institutions have some, almost all, not all, have some form of questions, if not scandals, surrounding them. And if you look at community groups, you look at churches and temples and mosques and so on, how do we organize ourselves in such a way that we actually want good governance? So, I, I mean, it, it's funny to me, but I often observe we all want good governance until it comes to us, and then we want a shortcut. Right? We want to be able to pick up the phone and circumvent the process. But if the process works, we would not have to do that. And so if we preserve our individual access and privilege, whatever it is, because we are afraid to lose it, what we are doing is we are undermining the system. And if we undermine the system, one day that phone call will not work and we will be victims of the bad governance that we help to perpetuate. So, Nira, if there's one thing that could be implemented to impact on our poor governance, or as you so lovely described it, our work in progress governance, I think it's poor. But if there was one thing you could do, what would that be? Ooh. I, I don't know that there's a magic bullet, but I might suggest a, a, a few things that are interconnected. So I would think that holding people to account between budgets in the parliament, so reporting on outcomes achieved from budget statement to budget statement, and finding some form of sanction where there's non-achievement other than vote them out would be useful and important. I think strengthening the FIU, the FIB, the Financial Intelligence Unit, the Financial Intelligence Bureau, the, the um, anti-corruption, uh, Intelligence Bureau, ACIB, and the Police Complaints Authority to give them prosecutorial powers as a suite of things that were, and, and of course, they have to be well managed. So there has to be a way to ensure that they are themselves um, checks on that. But if you can follow the money to see where there are instances in the system where people are, are benefiting in ways that they shouldn't and therefore undermining the governance and undermining the process and therefore undermining the institution and therefore making it so that good, honest, hardworking people do not have a clear path to success, 
then that would be helpful. And here I'm talking about public servants. I'm talking about businesses, large and small. I'm talking about politicians. Anybody who is in a position of authority or power or has access to public resources. And with that, the procurement legislation, I think that being enacted in full with the regulations, those things would go a long, long way in uh, holding people accountable and having also therefore demonstration effect. Let's talk a little about procurement, which I thought you took a long time to get to procurement legislation, while all the other things are, are very, very important. Tell me, what do you think has been the stumbling block? Why is it that procurement legislation has not been enacted fully? And how can we fix that? Giving up power is never easy. And um, it, it has seemed at various points that politicians in both parties, not writ large, but significant blocks in the parliament, when both parties were in government, did not want the legislation to be fully proclaimed. Um, they, the reality is that where we are now, we have a very good regulator to this point. He has shown himself to be a, a person of integrity and fortitude um, in Mr. Lalchan. And he has put forward all that needs to be done. And it, my understanding is that the, the back and forth that was required between the government and the office of the procurement regulator has happened. And they've cleared up whatever they need to clear up. And so now it's just a matter of political will. What can the citizen do to stimulate that interest in the political will and get it implemented? Well, I think I think one is we need to be more informed. I think we need to really understand what our real interest is. It, it, it's not in my interest if an East Indian is in, in, in the prime minister's office any more than it is if a person of African origin or Chinese origin or Syrian origin, if they are doing things that don't make the country better. So understanding what is our real interest in, in, in the political process and therefore what we should vote for, what we should support is one. But the second thing is that we have to be willing to um, force a conversation and give up some of the things that we come to enjoy with the looseness of the situation, but force a conversation about why a tighter set of governance um, rules uh, would be more beneficial for everyone. And as we bring <laughs> you to a close, Nirad, what is your final comment that you wish to leave with our, our listeners or viewers? My final comment is that it's not always easy to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think our governance issues are myriad and complex as they are anywhere else. And I would all, I, I like to use the analogy in almost every situation of a garden hose that is tangled. When you start to untangle a garden hose, you feel like you will never, never, never complete it if it's badly tangled. But then you will get through this one knot and then all of a sudden the entire hose will, 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 will straighten out. And so we need to take step by step until we get to that knot that untangles everything. But I believe there is no place in this, in this, on this planet like Trinidad and Tobago. I believe that the ingenuity and the caring mm -hmm. and the fundamental love and adaptability that we have cannot be replicated. And that there's a lot, a lot of hope for Trinidad and Tobago in the future. But we cannot sit down and expect somebody else to get it done. We all have to play our part. Thank you very much. And on that note, that we as citizens have to play our part. We have to untangle the hose. And we will get to a point in that wrapped up hose where the untangling will be almost seamless. On that note, thank you ever so much. And we bring this segment to an end. I'm Denise Deming, and see you next time. Please, Demi.
I'm sure you've noticed my outstanding earrings. Well, they were supplied by ShopCarib.com, an e-commerce platform fe featuring the widest collection of fashion, jewelry, art, craft, and accessories. All of these are made in the Caribbean. One of the thinkers behind Shop Carib is master communicator Roxanne Kozras. Welcome to the program, Roxanne. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Deming Chronicles. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on this program. Thank you very much. And hopefully there'll be a lot of chronicles. Hopefully we'll see a Caribbean space opened up a little more. Hopefully we will be able to focus on joy. And to me, this segment of joy highlights people who've done things or who are doing things. What inspired Shop Carib? So we, I mean, I love to shop, right? What Caribbean woman doesn't love to shop? And I would go to the, to the markets and the pop-ups and find the most fabulous things. But every time, you know, one thing kept, you know, niggling at my mind is that people were in these choked up spaces, you know, after the first couple of hours, the most enthusiastic marketing person or, or vendor was very tired, was very bored, was very non-communicative. And so I wanted to create a space where the vendors and the entrepreneurs could be just that, entrepreneurs, and doing the best that they do. So if you, do, you are the best at doing um, hand-painted earrings, like those lovely ones you're wearing from Exclusively Abstract, or if you are the best designer, like the, the, the outfit I'm wearing from Benny Carib. I want you to focus on that, produce. So the platform allows that kind of entrepreneur to sell their items, to market themselves, to brand their store. And so what inspired me was really to give entrepreneurs a space, give them a, a place where they can showcase themselves and most importantly, sell their products. You know, we're at, we're at a point now that it's very, very difficult for the, the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise. I mean, not talking about the big, big people. No problem. It's, everything is tough. But for that small operation, they, they're in a little bit of a crisis moment. And what inspired us to just get this platform up and running is just that. Giving people a chance to, to bring joy back into their lives. You know, giving them a chance to to bring um, money back into their families. You know, so it was just that. It was just that. It is this is a moment where um, the COVID pandemic has brought you know business to a halt, almost a halt, and giving people that opportunity to sell online. And how is that going? Is there traction? Yes. Interestingly enough, you know. One of the main things for us is that we said, you know what, this is your preparation. This is the time we're going to take this, this quarantine time and prepare yourselves. You know, that was our, that was my, my conversation with people. Use the time to prepare the platform, prepare your store, you know, get ready for when people want to shop again. But we started to find that people want to shop, that people are shopping. You know, people are, are, are you know, were craving something like this where you don't even have to leave your home. You know, you go online, two o'clock in the morning, you're, you're, you're bored, you you're can't sleep, and you go online, you buy something, and within a few days, it's brought to you wherever you are. In the US, in Canada, in the UK, in Trinidad and Tobago, it's brought to your home. So we're seeing, yes, we're seeing some traction. Um, it's not at a Fortune 500 level as yet, of course, because of where we are now, but it, it, it just speaks to preparedness getting ourselves ready you know economies and there's some even all over the world there are still pockets of people who haven't been affected by this pandemic as we have you know you know so that we are we're just ready we're just making ourselves making the platform ready for people who want to buy and that's that's so good so that you have people preparing yes. hopefully for 2021 when they will have significant profit exactly and, and sales, you know, the sales are coming in, sales are coming in. Um, we're seeing, certainly we're seeing some of the vendors, some are more trending than others in terms of their, their items are being sold or requested or inquired about, but it's coming, don't worry, it's coming. 
But what are some of the challenges? Because with any new enterprise, yeah. and e-commerce is new for us in Trinidad. So what are some of the challenges that you all are seeing? Yes. So I think, you know, we've been able to, because of, of my background and my company, we have quite a, dif a few different strengths in-house. Um, so we do communications and PR, we do website development, we do design. So we were able to just take those areas of, of capacity and pull it together to work on this. So in terms of challenges, one of the key things is this e-commerce. Overall, you know, it's been a little bit of a, a hurdle, but we've been able to get over it. We've been working very, very closely with First Citizens Bank and their e-commerce staff, putting things in place. So that is in itself, it is a little bit of a challenge. It is a little bit of a challenge, but we've been able to overcome it. Um, another key challenge that we've been able to, to overcome has been shipping. You know, normally when you try to calculate the cost of a courier service, moving things out of the country, even if it's just a little envelope, a little, you know, a document, it can be a little pricey. And we've been able to negotiate and work with our, um, some partners at DHL, and they've brought that down significantly for us. So for the platform, for, for vendors who are selling through Shockerail, we've been able to get a, it's almost a $20 cost to ship something out to the US and Canada. So it's think there, there are some challenges, yes. Business will always have challenges, but so far we've been able to ride over, ride through, negotiate, you know, move to the side, move to the left kind of thing to be able to deal with them. What is your future vision for, for Shop Caribe? Ah, well, you know, we've been moving to include other islands. So that the platform, we really, truly want it to be a platform for Caribbean-made things. So if, if I'm sitting, and we've even seen, I mean, when we look at our statistics and the people who are visiting the site, you're seeing all sorts of things. You're seeing France, yes, North America, yes, um, Canada, but you're seeing people looking at it from France, people looking at it from China, um, the Netherlands, and I'm saying, and what we really want is for anyone who's interested in something from the Caribbean, something novel, something interesting, something avant-garde, that they choose us. They come to shockarib.com as the main area to find their things. And so to, to, to realize that vision, we've been outreaching to other islands. So we're having, um, yes, Tobago is there. Tobago, Tobago entrepreneurs are on the site. Trini entrepreneurs are on the site. Some Bajan entrepreneurs are on the site as well. Um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Jamaica, St. Lucia. So that's the, the vision is, this is the, the platform for Caribbean made things. You know, if you want that, that lovely dress with a, a Monstera print on it, where do I go to find that? I don't go on Amazon. I come, you know, until Amazon buys us out. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> Yeah, let's put that out there, that the future is really, really, really bright. And Roxanne, as we wrap the show, just in a couple of seconds, tell me, what joy does this bring to you? Uh, I think, you know, in I read something today that today is the, the 12th of September. And um, it is, you know, in remember in the U.S. we had the, um, the, tower, the tower bombings on the 11th of September. So they had actually named the 12th of September as the day of encouragement, you know, and I think that that is what we need right now. Not about, you know, yes, things are tough. Things are difficult all around. We, we think that, um, you know, business is changing, economies are changing, um, governments are changing, doing things, budget is coming, but we have to be encouraged that we are here. We have to be encouraged that we have purpose. You know, that every day that we're here, there's a role for us to play. There's some contribution that we can make to this place, to this space. And my joy comes from being able to do that. Um, I met one of, the, one of the entrepreneurs and she tells me, wow, listen, I was so downhearted March, April. And you've given me this space to, to turn things around for myself and my family. And that's, that's my joy. 
And on that note, the joy of entrepreneurship, we wrap this section. Thank you very much, Roxanne. Shop Caribe online. Best wishes.